Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Senator Oji Kalu has proposed a part-time legislative system for both the national and subnational levels to reduce the cost of governance. He suggests that the legislature should meet three times to four times a year without, with provisions rather for emergency sessions. Kalu argues that this approach could help save money and improve trust in the legislative process. He calls on the president and the National Assembly to consider and implement such reforms. Okay, so cutting cost of governance. Yeah, well, well uh, cutting cost of, cost of governance is a good thing. Everybody has been talking about this. He was proposing that uh, the Senate meets uh, maybe once in every six months mm -hmm. or three times in a year and all that. Well, it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. um, that he said, but he spoiled it at the mm -hmm. end of it because he said that the money that the senators uh, or the National Assembly members are getting is not enough. Mm. So I, I really don't know what that. So the is. reason why you're even saying this is more of that we need to cut we, costs. We, yeah, like we don't even have enough money. So that's the reason why we're cutting costs. Not that we're really cutting costs because of Nigerians. Even though he was saying that, oh, the country needs money. But the country needs money. Are you looking at your own interest? Or is for the general interest, the common interest for Nigerians? Because if you tell me that, okay, let's cut costs because this money I'm getting is not enough. It's just like you're saying, okay, uh, the money you're paying me for salary is not enough. If I have to come to the office every day, let me come one day in a week or two days in a week so that that money will be enough for me. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's saying. That's what the statement, according to how a lot of people will understand it, means that for the money that I think of it, let them still be paid that money. But they should um, cut the times that they go to the National Assembly to do whatever they need to do. I think he spoiled it at that moment. Yeah, when he said the yes. senators are not being paid well. Yes, that they're not paid, being paid well. Huh? I mean, what does that mean? When you're talking about cutting costs, everybody's talking about the kind of humongous amounts of money that the people in the National Assembly earn. And then you're saying that they're not being paid enough. So how so, much do so what if you were paid 70,000 Naira, like the minimum mm -hmm. wage we're talking about? What would you say? You just say that you've never seen the Naira in your eyes, with your <laughs> eyes, because like they, were used to, they used to say in those days, zero allocation to a state. Mm -hmm. How can you have zero allocation to a state? It's not possible. But you're telling us that there's zero allocation because the money is not enough for you to do X, Y, Z. And you know what's so funny? This is the same person that was a governor. And we're just discussing this off air. And I was saying how most of our politicians, they move over from becoming governors. Um, then they move over to the Senate. So you're still getting money you know pensions or something you're still mm -hmm. getting money as a governor like you rightly said and you're still getting money as a senator as well yeah. so how much do you want do you feel like nigeria is just for you and your family they have, do you think why, that why other should, people do not need this why money should someone even serve the country for four years and earn a pension for life and then when someone, people, people someone, has, someone is spending 30 to 35 years and then sometimes he doesn't even see his pension mm -hmm. because it doesn't come. Um, it's from pension funds that uh, the government is even borrowing mm -hmm. <laughs> and so many other things. And then you're t telling me that you're not earning enough money. It should, I, I thought maybe he should say that Nigerians who are patriotic should be the only ones to, who will go to the National Assembly and be doing voluntary jobs and all, only earning maybe an allowance that will 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 fuel their cars yeah. whenever they're coming, transport allowance or something. Expensive. Because if you're not pro, uh, uh, patriotic, you cannot, you cannot serve your people. It's not yeah. possible. But we've seen that over time, people who go into, the, into politics are going there for empowerment, phys, um, financial poverty empowerment, alleviation. poverty alleviation. Mm -hmm. You see someone who is not having three square meals get into government, uh, get out after four years, and he has a fleet of cars, he has hotels here and there, he has... A lot of people, and then he has a lot of girlfriends, he's sponsoring <laughs> somewhere, and all that. So I really don't understand what he means that they are not paid well. Mm. Because Nigerians are clamoring that they cut the amount of money they are being paid. Yeah. I mean, he's saying they should cut it. But I think what he's saying is a good thing, but it's just with the wrong reasons.
So you're saying, oh, let's cut the cost of governance. Let's meet which is good. three to four times in a year. So let's just say every quarter, which makes sense instead of that's your everyday job, right? It's a good thing. But the, the, the reason behind it for you saying we're not being paid well, that's the reason why I want us to cut it. So are you really thinking of the people, the people that you're supposed to be serving? Are you thinking of them? Because you earn so much. Do you know how much your salary can change lives? Do you know if people have to get sex off your salary? Do you know how many people that is going to be? So if, if, I think let's not just look at it as, oh, you know what? I'm not being paid well. I just want to come here three to four times a year. And that's it. No, it should be, I want to sacrifice. You're telling Nigerians to sacrifice. You, sh you should also sacrifice as well. It shouldn't just be the Nigerian people. So if you're coming out and you're saying, you know what, we want to sacrifice this for the Nigerian people, um, I bet you a lot of people are going to commend you. A lot of people are going to give you an, an applause to say, yes, this is what we've always wanted. The government that cares for its people, the government that thinks for its people. But now you've spoiled everything by saying you're not being paid well. Well, we know fully well. So you're being paid a lot of money to be a senator and you're still getting pensions from being a governor and it's almost like we're recycling the same leaders you keep telling us that oh the leaders you know the children are the leaders of tomorrow i haven't seen how many people do i know my age i'm over 30 approaching 40. how many people do i know my age that are really in government but you know but most of the time is where no, other people that statement is the truest statement because you know tomorrow never comes, comes. Mm. <laughs> so someone tells you i'm going to pay tomorrow you uh, never know which you tomorrow. never know the tomorrow because when you get to tomorrow there'll still be a tomorrow mm -hmm. that's what they use to mm -hmm. just say leaders of tomorrow Scum. so if you are not a leader now uh, tomorrow will never come mm. so that's a very true statement we need to stop recycling you know the leaders you've 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 my performed prob right my problem is not even in recycling my problem is when we recycle these people how patriotic are they? How willing are they to serve? I know of, I can't remember this country now, there was a president that served. He served so well, retired, went away, and, and you wanted him back. people came to him, bought from for him, do, did everything that he must come back. And he was very old. He said, I, I'm not coming. He, they insisted, and he came back. So you could do something, and people want well, comment, you. Yes. And people want you to still be in the limelight. We've seen. Even in America, there are senators that have been there for up, up to 50 years. There's mm -hmm. some 30, 40 years, yes. But how wealthy are they because of being in the, in the Senate? They're, they're not. doing it because... They're doing it because of the passion want the, they have Yes, for, they for want America. the good of the land. So I, I don't know how our politicians, our, our Nigerians, all of us, all of us, <laughs> I don't know how we think. Because if they make me a senator tomorrow, I don't know whether I can be these self-righteous that i'm trying to put myself now God's because grace, yes. sometimes you can be it's a sometimes, choice sometimes sometimes you get there and they will so frustrate, frustrate i know tell me about before it. you know what you're doing you are doing some things and you don't even realize that you are going against what look at people that are being principles. sanctioned because they speak up for instance a policeman goes to the police college he graduates as a police constable or something and then they send him to the road you know, go and stand there at the roadblock and all that. And this policeman is not being paid for the first six months. What do you think he will, he will be? He has to find will he a go way back to... and be a pastor and collect offer tree and then come and feed mm. his family? Gradually, gradually. He has to find he... a way to feed his family. So that is what is happening. It's a cult-like kind of thing, mm. you know. You enter there and they frustrate you until you submit. So some people that went into the National Assembly, for instance, why do you think they cross carpet into... Uh, political parties that are big because you have your principles you have what you want to achieve for the name of your party but um they're frustrating you yeah you so they want to subdue a committee you chairman of this you will never be that mm -hmm. you'll never be that so you're not seeing so anything. they want to subdue you to ensure that you do their bidding so you know it, it now becomes the classic case of if you can't beat them join you join them. them and that is so sad because how did corruption eat so deeply into our nation that you are, nobody's even thinking of what is right. You're just thinking of what is right for my belly, not what is right for Nigeria. But like you said, there are some people who can still live above board. And mm -hmm. when you find out that uh, it is no longer as, as conducive as it is, the honorable thing is to leave. Mm -hmm. There are people who have resigned in Live Nigeria. with your integrity. Leave, just leave. 
sometimes you are you are suspended and you see that maybe you're innocent or even if you're guilty and you say okay you know what instead of me staying here and to be a clog in the progress of uh, this uh, particular environment i find myself let me resign mm -hmm. just like it happened i think a commissioner in abia state recently was suspended because of a, a, a particular problem mm -hmm. and she decided that she was going to resign whether she's guilty or not guilty a regular Nigerian will not resign. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, no, saying, yeah, when we you're, see you're, somebody you're saying... You, do, you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. You, you should have stayed there. You, should, you can play the game with them. So, but no, I so think we still your applaud integrity Nigerians. Is... There are Nigerians with integrity. Yes. So whenever we say Nigerians are corrupt, this and no, that, there are people it's not all who live Nigerians. above board. Mm -hmm. But these people are so few and so... so I, I don't know the word, so... They are beaten down mm. all the time by the the, the so noisy people. It seems like people. their voices are not heard. Yeah. But wherever you are, do your best and just just have the interest of uh, of Nigeria at heart. We mm -hmm. we find people even in the Senate, Ali Ndume, for instance. Yeah. Uh, he may not be a saint, but he he voices what he feels. Mm -hmm. Um. There was another another House of Assembly of uh, National Assembly member Kazori or so mm. who he. He speaks by demonstrating mm -hmm. his English may not be very, very fantastic, thorough, fantastic yeah. but he makes his points known. And there are people like that in the National Assembly, even though they are few and far apart, but we still applaud you. But it starts with one. Yes. I think let's reiterate the fact that it starts with one. If you're always going to keep waiting for the next person to do what is right, then nobody's going to do what mm -hmm. is right. So if you are in a place of position whereby you can do the right thing, you have your integrity, um, I think when you do that, before you know it, it might take a while, but other people will start to sprout up with that same integrity because we mirror each other. The reason why we, Nigeria is the way it is now is because we've allowed bad things to thrive in our nation and the people who are good have been silenced for so long you can decide to be silent but if you say no i'm going to take the bull by the horn i'm not going to be silent i'm going to voice out for what is right then before you know it your voices will start to get amplified when other people join you so do not wait for anybody else start to do what is right in your own little corner in your own place of power do the right thing and before you know it there are people who will join you as well Mm. At, at one point in my life, in my journey into this um, broadcasting, there was a time something happened. Um, I wouldn't say it was really my fault, but uh, I took responsibility and said, okay, um, I said, okay, it's, it's my fault. And I hope that it will not happen anymore. And um, I was supposed to open the station at 6 of 5.30 and I opened it at 5.35 and that was because I was detained in the station to stand in for someone else uh, longer than uh, usual. Mm -hmm. So before I got home, even to prepare and come back, I was five minutes late. So they gave me a query and I said, oh, because of what happened last night, I overslept. But that's why I opened the station um, late. Do you know what the, the reply was from management? You didn't even have the courtesy to lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's Actually, what they told me. You didn't even have the courtesy to lie. And I was like, how is Why lying a courtesy? Yeah. How is lying a courtesy? I had to face management. I had to answer other queries and all that because I didn't lie. Imagine. Imagine what we're promoting. And then, but about, about, about five years later, that same person who was telling me that I didn't have a courtesy to lie and nearly suspended me had an appointment somewhere and he was looking for people to take to his new post because mm. people he could trust people he could yeah. rely on and all that and he so came back to me and said okay you, because regardless. you tell the truth and you're hard working i'd like you to be with me so that i can succeed so the bottom line of this story is that no matter how you're vilified today no matter how people shout you down and all that mm -hmm. everything you do will testify for or against you tomorrow yes. if not on earth in heaven mm -hmm. That's because a like Ali Dume said you are either a christian or you're a muslim so god will ask you what mm -hmm. you did in the national assembly because you were given the power yeah. so there is a place you will answer a question about how you conducted your affairs mm -hmm. in the responsibility you're given true i i totally agree with that and then circling back into um what Oji Kalu said um i think it is important that we cut the cost of governance people in the you don't even region, need two houses in the you don't even, do you understand you can collapse yeah. them you can merge them into one meet at different 
times in the year i think quarterly would be amazing that's fine because if we're looking at having a sustainable economy for us we need to start to look at it's just like a company you're saying okay you know what we need to cut our costs right if we were running diesel for 10 hours and we know that what we're really using is like five hours you start to utilize your resources you utilize it in the right way that it should be so that you're not just having um expenditure for no reason or you think or, of solar power yeah or you Instead, think of something else yes for instance the the, the the president has how many ministers his cabinet is over bloated you can start to i know that it's quite unfortunate because some people will have to be cut out right but you start from somewhere. Those people need to understand that, you know what, this is what we need to do for us to get to where we need to get to. And you start to do that now. But that part of saying we're not being paid well, mm -mm. <laughs> you're being paid well. If there's and they conduce, uh, there's a conducive environment to do business, a lot of people will not even go into politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you want? No, they politics? say that it's a business you now. You don't even need to go to politics. I can't do politics, no matter how, how it is. Except maybe they will just go and call me from somewhere and say, come and help us. And I'm not an elected person. I can't mm, go and start appointed. promising people things Something that, that you not would not even do. <laughs> and all those kind of things. I, I can't go and sit at parliament and be talking just to please the chairman or the governor or mm. the president. I can't do that. I'll tell you what I need to tell you at least every once in a while. Yeah. But I will not be in the good book. So they'll, they'll boot me out. Mm. And I've had experience. So let, that's matter for another day. <laughs> Politics is not for the faint hearted. Mm. But it also needs to be for the people who are patriotic enough. Yes, you need to be passionate about Nigeria so that when you're going there, that's what supersedes any other noise that you hear. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, I'm passionate about my country. I want, his, I want to do what is right for my country and by my country. And, and that's it.